grab a seat. We have a couple seats. Friendship and healthy competition. 
the Toronto 2015 Games will be another example of just how powerful sport can be. We'll experience significant long-term benefits to the sport community through improved facilities, heightened public awareness and engagement, and the potential to forge new partnerships, many already in this room. So now, with less than 80 days to go until London, the torch is lit and that journey has begun. While much work still needs to be done, I can tell you that our summer athletes are raring to go. They're dedicated, determined, and fight. This week, the Canadian Olympic team launched its new campaign under the banner, Give Your Everything. This campaign shines the spotlight on that dedication and determined in a few short months, and I'm sure that you do too. Today, we're honored to be joined by some athletes from the past, from the present, and the future sitting here with us today. First, I'd like to introduce Toronto natives, Claire McGovern and Carol Marshall. Stand up, please. is a 19-year-old boxer in the 64-kilogram weight class, and he's already won five provincial boxing titles. Well, his future, of course, is to win a gold medal right here in front of his friends and family in Toronto 2015. Welcome. And now for some of our veteran Canadian athletes. Firstly, the GTA's own Rosie McLennan. She's a trampolinist who's won Canadian championships in 2005, 2009, and 2011. She was seventh at the 2008 Beijing Summer Games, and she's qualified for London 2012, and a gold medalist in Guadalajara at the Pan Am Games. Let's wish her all the best. Our Ontario athlete is Aaron Dornicamp. He's a Canadian national basketball team player who currently plays pro in Europe and was a former Pan Am Games athlete, having represented Canada in 2007 in Rio. He also played in the 2009 and 2011 FIBA All-Americas Champion. Please welcome Karen. Now, I know we have some other athletes here. So any other athletes here, please put up your hand. We've got some other athletes here. There you go. Alexandra Orlando is also here with us today. Now, followed by the Honorable Charles Sousa, Ontario Minister responsible for the Pan Am and Parapan American Games. Please welcome. House of Commons. Uh Members of Parliament, Chiefs and Carmichael are here, Minister Susan Chan from the Government of Ontario, and of course, um, my friend Mayor Rob Ford, and members of the Toronto 2015 Organizing Committee and guests. It is good to be home in the uh, GTA. I uh, left Ottawa early this morning. You know, it wasn't as warm. A lot of grumpy people. Now I'm in this happy place in the Toronto waterfront. And, all the smiling athletes and great accomplishments, very positive attitude here in, uh, in Toronto and the, and the GTA. I am excited to be here as we set the stage for the upcoming 2015 uh, Pan American Games. Je suis très heureux d'être ici à Toronto aujourd'hui afin de soulever global economic challenges as the rest of the world. We are facing them from a well established position of strength. Canada came out of the uh, Great Recession um, in better shape than most countries in the world, and we're, we, we've come out of it relatively well. We have modest growth, we have very good job creation numbers um, this morning. We, um, we have done our, our budget, which is long-range, forward-looking jobs, growth, and long-term prosperity. Sound public finances is the uh, foundation um, for, the, uh, for the growth of our economy here. Now, part of that strategy is making sound strategic investments in initiatives that will have a long-lasting, positive economic impact on our country. And the 2015 Pan American Games are a good example of an initiative that reaches well beyond sport and community benefits. Hosting the Games in 2015 will have enduring economic benefits for the GTA, the region, and our nation as a whole. That is why the games were mentioned specifically in the budget this year, Economic Action Plan 2012. Our government has committed up to $500 million to fund infrastructure requirements, legacy initiatives, and essential federal services that will ensure safe and secure games for all participants and spectators. In the short term, this funding will help create jobs in the construction industry and in the long term, 
sectors related to tourism, such as hotels and restaurants, will also benefit enormously. Our infrastructure investments will not only give our world-class athletes the opportunity to compete in state-of-the-art sports facilities during the games, but will leave behind lasting economic and sport legacies for high-performance training and the hosting of world-class competition long after the games are over. This is not to mention the legacies this infrastructure will leave behind at the local level, including community-based sports and recreation programming that will keep our communities active, healthy, and happy. Our government is proud to be a part of this initiative, along with the province of Ontario and the city of Toronto. In addition to providing lasting economic benefits, we're also helping to bring one of the world's premier sporting events to our region. The year 2015 will be an exciting time to be in Toronto, and we're looking forward to welcoming the Americas to this wonderful city and region. Thank you. And now we'll hear from Minister Souza of the Government of Ontario. To be here. I'm very proud of the work of so many as we update our progress and outline the Pan Am vision. I'd like to recognize my colleague Michael Chan, the Minister of Tourism, Culture and Sport. Of course, we just heard from Mr. Flaherty, Minister Gosel. My federal partner in these games, Mayor Ford, and members of City Council are here. Ian Troop, the CEO of the games, Roger Garland, the board member, the board chair, as well as Sylvie Werner, Bernier, and Charmaine Brooks, our wonderful hosts today. To the board members at Toronto 2015 Games, the Organizing Committee of 2015, the Provincial and National Sports Organization, the Canadian Olympic Committee, and the Paralympic Committee, the staff of the Ontario Pan Am Secretariat. I thank you all, but especially, and not least of all, our fabulous athletes. None of this would be possible without your dedication, discipline, and determination to achieve your goals and make us proud. C'est un grand privilège d'être ici pour représenter le premier ministre de l'Ontario, Colton McGinty, et le gouvernement d'Ontario pour ses chemins vers le jeu pan American et pan pan American. Bem-vindo a todos nesta celebração dos Jogos 2015. O seu apoio deste grupo diverso nos dá o que é necessário para oferecer bem aos atletas do melhor do mundo na nossa cidade, na nossa região, na província de Ontario. I am very privileged to represent the Premier and the Ontario Government as we embark on the next leg of our historic journey towards the 2015 Games. In a moment, Ian Troop will unveil our revised venue clusters and discuss the scope of the new Pan Am Sports facilities. It's an exciting plan that will deliver an exciting interactive set of games for Ontario and for Canada. And that's why we're calling them the People's Games. They'll be affordable, they'll be accessible, and they'll provide exceptional conditions for athletes, Ontarians, and visitors to our province. It's a plan that will deliver upon the Premier, Premier Colin McGinty's vision, more than four years ago, when he started going after these games. He recognized early on its tremendous potential to provide much needed sports infrastructure for Ontario, and lasting economic and social benefits for our children and grandchildren. That foresight is paying off. The People's Games will be one of the largest economic drivers in the Greater Gordon Horseshoe over the next three years. It's triggering investments in infrastructure that only comes from hosting major international sporting events. Our high-performance athletes will soon be able to train and compete in world-class facilities right here at home. For more than 80 years, Ontario was never awarded or selected to host big games. We now have an opportunity to broaden our reach for athletes, enhance our social and cultural programs, and bolster our economy. These games will be huge with more than 10,000 athletes and officials coming to our province. It offers us an extraordinary opportunity to showcase our wonderful communities and cultural diversity on the world stage. Athletes will be welcomed and celebrated like champions on their own, in their own home country, because so many of them live here too. Our new Pan Am facilities will be hubs of community activity, where Ontario families will enjoy access to sport and recreational centers for years to come. We make no apologies to support these legacy venues. We have purposely shared the benefits 
throughout the region. And these important venues are on track, including the new Scarborough Pan American Aquatic Centre Fieldhouse and the new Canadian Sport Institute in Ontario. There will be the redevelopment of the Ivor Wynn Stadium in Hamilton, the new Pan American Athletic Stadium at York University, and Canada's only four-season, all-season velodrome in Milton. Marco will be home to a Pan Am Centre with a pool, and its Obico Olympia will now be renovated. And University of Toronto's Pan American Field Hockey Centre will become the St. George's of campus. These are just to name a few. The construction of these facilities, along with its operations, will create 15,000 jobs right across the province. And another 5,200 jobs are being created by the province's redevelopment of the West Ontario. This community village will house athletes and coaches from 40 different countries. It will then become home to thousands of Ontarians, such as the George Brown College residents, market condominiums, and affordable housing. And we're proud to also introduce a new state-of-the-art YMCA in the village too. And let's be clear, the games have accelerated this major waterfront revitalization by 10 years. It's also the driving force behind the Union Pearson Airport Rail Link. A new transit corridor that will finally connect the busiest airport in Canada to the biggest city in Canada, as well as accelerate the much needed redevelopment of Union Station. That alone will create another 1,200 jobs while removing 1.2 million cars off roads in its first year of operation. Hosting the People's Games will truly bring a host of benefits to our families and communities. I take my responsibility to oversee the Pan Am project, its fiscal issues, its budget and plans, very seriously. And having said that, I'm pleased to announce approval of the revisions made to the Pan Am budget. The Pan Parapan American Games budget is prudent, reasonable, and respectful of Ontario families. The new cl cluster approach is not only practical and sensible, but also brings good value. The larger bill procurement will conclude in the coming months thanks to the tremendous work of Infrastructure Ontario. They've been excellent in negotiating the major capital projects. This is the product of many months of hard work and creative problems. I want to commend the board, the management, and the staff at Toronto 2015, as well as acknowledge the ongoing commitment and partnership of all levels of government. Today, we're stepping up our game to deliver a gold medal at the Pan and Parapan American Games in the greatest province in the best country of the world. Merci, gracias, obrigado. Thank you.
We're having venues where you can see and feel the competition and see those athletes truly competing. It will be authentic. It will be accessible and affordable. We like to think about the fact we want to make these games such that a family of four can afford to bring the kids and experience everything it has to be about the cultures and the sporting event itself. It only happens all too infrequently now with our professional sports. This will be an opportunity for us. We are committed financially. We will make, we will be responsible and look within the budgets we've been provided for. This is very important. We take that obligation seriously, very seriously. And finally, as a people's game, this is a celebration. It's a celebration of sport and culture. Those two things which span cultures and bring people together, we will have a tremendous opportunity to use both the power of sport and the power of culture to make a great event in 2015. Now, I'm here to reveal the footprint, so let's look at that map. As the map comes up, I want to talk about three things we're looking to do with this uh, venue footprint. Firstly, we're maintaining regionality. We think that we're driving clustering as a, a fundamental approach to our games. Clustering does a number of things which we think are all very good. First, it makes our footprint a lot simpler, which means we can move people in a much simpler way. How many sports they want to see. So when you look at it, clustering is a major intervention from our perspective that really results in a, a better game, a simpler game, more cost-effective games, and a better games for both the athlete and the spectator as well. As we look at our guiding principles, we, we built from the bid book and we said we need to make this better, we need to evolve it. And as we did that, you know, the clustering helped drive a number of important changes. As you look at clustering, we moved from five clusters to eight, increasing the scale of the games. Accordingly, what you also see is the number of standalone venues. The number of standalone venues decreases from 26 to 10. Fundamentally, every time you have a standalone venue, that drives complexity. By dropping it from 26 to 10, we sweat our assets more and we make it a simpler game to execute. Now, we've talked a lot about clustering. What I want to do is bring that alive by talking about Pan Am Park. Pan Am Park is going to be the heart of Toronto 2015. It is, in fact, our largest cluster located at the historic exhibition but the Pan, but the Pan Am Park will be actually central from a cultural standpoint as well. We expect people to have the opportunity to listen to live music, to enjoy the food of the region, to meet athletes from the region. We like to think in terms of, from a goal standpoint, that after walking through the entrance of Pan Am Park, a, a husband and a wife will turn to each other and they will say, you know, we've just got our money's worth, and we haven't even seen the sport yet. And we think by that's what the power we get when we combine sports with culture. Next, moving around the cluster footprint, we have U of T, the downtown cluster. It will be home to three sports. Field hockey and a newly built field hockey center. Handball and artistic roller sports, which will be held at Gold Ring Center. Moving east east around the footprint. We want to make a stop at the CIBC Pan and Para Pan American Games Athletes Village. This is a, pro a provincially funded uh, project, but it really does underscore the triggering event that our games can be, taking an area which was a brownfield and making it be a vibrant community center right downtown for the years to come. Construction of the village is already underway. Moving east on the footprint, we come to the University of Toronto Scarborough campus. It will be home to swimming, diving, and modern pentathlon, as well as fencing. This venue will be our largest single build and a great legacy facility, serving the needs of the growing U of T campus in Scarborough and filling a major facility gap that exists in Scarborough, providing for a healthy, active living for a host of generations to come. There will be more news on this facility forthcoming. The building site is already ready to go, remediated and ready on time and on budget. And if you drive down Morningside, you'll see this gigantic hole to the east. We call that the most beautiful hole in all of GTA. 
as holes go. Construction for that will start in July 2010, and that will be ready for test events in 2014. Moving to the north, I come to Markham in the Markham Cluster, also one of our new builds. It'll be home to water pole, badminton, and table tennis during the game's time. Markham is incredibly enthusiastic about the coming of the Pan Am Games to that community, and they have truly been a great partner as we've developed this venue. I have no doubt that Markham, with this partnership, will be a very exciting place to be. That new venue was beginning construction in July and will also be ready in 2014. Sliding to the west, we have the York University Cluster, home to tennis and athletics. Tennis will use the world-class facility at York, while athletics is a new build, a new stadium being constructed, which will complement our existing indoor track and field training facility. Again, construction starts in the fall of 2010. It will be also ready in 2014. Moving to the west and the south, getting closer to the mayor's territory, we've got the Akatopico Cluster. And at, at Centennial Park, we'll have DMX and archery. Nearby, we'll have bowling. We also have the Olympium, and it's important to note the Olympium is a, a training facility, but because of the Pan Am Games, we're investing to renovate that facility. It was built in 1975. Hasn't had a major renovation since, and because of the Games, while it's a training facility, that will be brought up to snuff and be a fantastic facility, once again, serving future generations like it has so well served the past. It's a great example of Pan Am legacy building in action. Moving to the west, we're in Mississauga, the Mississauga Cluster. We're calling that a combative sports cluster, home to wrestling, taekwondo, judo, and karate. It is a great example in our minds of using an existing facility and really repurposing it with creative use. Uh, it'll be a great and exciting place to be, and I think one of the safest places to be during the games. So that's the cluster, big centers, all with multiple sports, giving us great simplicity and a great uh, spectator as well as uh, athletes' experience. But there's more to it than that. So let me have a look now at from a regional We call that Soccer Central. It is a new build, and it marks the closing of a circle in that we are replacing Ivor Wynn Stadium, which was built for the very last time we had a multi-sport games in this region which is the Empire Games in 1930. Mm -hmm. Moving to the north is Milton, and the Milton Velodrome for track cycling. It is also a new build. It will be the home for Canadian cycling. Right now, our Canadian cyclists have to train in Carson, California. They'll be able to train right here in Canada. Not only that, though, Milton is using this as a community center, and for them, it serves the growing needs of that growing population. A great example of building versatility into our venues to ensure that they have sustaining legacy well beyond the games themselves. Moving on, we have the Caledon Equestrian Park, Fort Equestrian. This is a home to the Pan Am 2007 Pan Am Trials and uh, recommended, recommended by the Equestrian Federation Hardly as the best site for equestrian in Ontario. Moving north to Oro Wadante, we have mountain biking. Beyond that, in Minden, we have slalom, canoe, and kayak at one of the few natural courses in North America and a favorite for the athletes. South, we go to Oshawa, where we have boxing. Moving on, back to the city, we've got the Royal Canadian Yacht Club for sailing. <coughs> Finally, we have the Peter Gilgan Athletic Center for basketball. This is located at the historic Maple Leaf Gardens, Toronto's Hockey Shrine, which is now turned into the Ryerson Athletic Center. That will be a fantastic venue for both men's and women's basketball in 2015. Now, we do have a few things left to do. We are finalizing the homes for four sports, golf, shooting, baseball, and softball. But work is well underway on them, and we expect to have final decisions this summer. We also see the Para Games, the Para Pan, uh, Pan American Games, is a very important part of our games. We'll have a separate announcement for them before the start of the summertime, 
where we can give them their full time they justly deserve. I am constantly being impacted by how inspiring those athletes can be for us as we think of our own challenges and we're looking forward to setting a new benchmark what the Parapan Games can be in Toronto in 2015. Operating and spends by year in building blocks. But I, so I won't go through that in great detail, but I will say two things. We are committed to living within this budget and we believe we can put on a great event for this budget. Secondly, we're committed to being transparent and open in everything we do and we'll be providing regular updates on our progress from a budget perspective as we move forward with these games. So, there you have it, the game's footprint. In closing, I'd like to say a number of things. We have three years to go. In my office, we like to call it 165 weeks. But who's counting? We're in great shape. And we are excited about being able to deliver a fantastic spectator and sport experience in July 2015 to Southern Ontario. The TO 2015 team, and I speak on all my team, is absolutely thrilled to provide Canadian athletes with the chance to compete at home. A chance to compete in front of family, friends, and a hometown crowd. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur Trudeau. Very, very impressive. What a spectacular legacy this will be to the athletes of Ontario and of Canada. And all of the best finance minister in the world. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> colleagues. <laughs> Colleagues from the Parliament, uh, Senator Bim Koshir is here, and uh, uh, you know it, it is uh, great to be here today to celebrate a milestone on the journey towards 2015 Pan American Games. We're joined by Mr. Sousa, Mr. Chan, uh, who are representing the Government of Ontario, uh, Mayor Rob Ford, uh, City of Toronto. Toronto 2015 Organizing Committee, of course, some of the Canadian athletes. Thank you for being here. As Minister of State for Sport, I couldn't be more excited to be here as we gear up to, the, to host the Americas in 2015. I had the pleasure of witnessing our athletes in action in Guadalajara, Mexico last fall, and it will be great to bring these games to Canada where they can compete on home soil and once again show show the rest of the hemisphere that they bring what they bring to the playing field. The Harper government is proud partner in hosting these games right here in the Golden Horseshoe, not far from my hometown of Brampton. Today's announcement of the main cluster locations for sport and cultural events is an indication that planning is proceeding and that their games are drawing closer. In only three short years, we will welcome young athletes from across the Americas to this wonderful part from this great competition right here in Toronto. Furthermore, these games play an important role in the development of Canadian athletes by providing valuable training and experience and preparing them for future international competitions including Olympic and Paralympic Games. As the largest single contributor to sport in this country, our government is committed to promoting the culture of sport and physical activity. We want to ensure that Canadians of all ages and all abilities have the opportunity to get involved in sport and physical activity to get benefit from active and healthy lifestyles. That is why we are proud to support the Pan and Para Pan American Games. As Minister Flaherty touched on earlier, we will be providing funding of $500 million for infrastructure requirements, legacy industries, and essential federal services. A significant investment for a significant event. We look forward to announcing these capital projects over the coming weeks and months. Hosting 2015 Pan American Games will result in a lasting sport legacy. Canadian athletes and coaches from coast to coast to coast will benefit from new world-class facilities right here in Ontario. Community members will also be able to enjoy these great facilities 
and this area will welcome uh, attract international competitions for years to come. The cluster approach is the sensible and cost-effective way to use new and previously constructed venues to host a mem memorable Pan American Games, one that will benefit communities throughout the region and as well as local residents and future athletes long into the future. We're proud to partner with the province of Ontario, the City of Toronto, the 2015 Organizing Committee and the Canadian Olympic and Paralympic Committees to ensure the success of these games, which will give us an opportunity to show off not only our sports excellence, but also our engineering and design expertise. This beautiful area of the country and our welcoming Canadian culture to athletes, coaches and their supporters from across America. Thank you very much. And now I will ask uh, Mr. Chan to come up and uh, say a few words. Thank you. And so we eager to get this game. He made a trip. He made a trip to Beijing Olympic. Find an opportunity to engage and talk to all those Olympic members, Olympic committee members from America and subsequently all the great work of our partners, industry, industry leaders. We landed the game and 2015 we are going to host the Pan American Game right here, right here in this beautiful city we call Toronto. It's a pleasure to join you and with our federal and municipal colleagues as we welcome the wedding customer for the 2015 Pan Parapan American Games. The games and their weddings are significant to our athletes, our coaches, and the people of Ontario. Across the Golden Horseshoe, our talented athletes will have the necessary facilities to train and compete from Toronto to Mississauga to Markham and beyond. The legacy of these weddings will bring great opportunity for our young people, increasing sport participation across the region as our children and families enjoy access to much needed recreation facilities. Ladies and gentlemen, sport as an important player in Ontario's tourism industry, a sector that generates $22 billion into our economy, supporting 330,000 jobs. The new venue cluster will strengthen this sector by attracting spectators, fans and visitors to surrounding communities to cheer our athletes and discover all that Ontario has to offer. Because here in Ontario, we are home to internationally recognized athletes. We will have we will have the world class sporting facility and we will host Ontario as a place to explore, a place to experience, a place after all we call home. Thank you very much, Maximo Group. Thank you, Ministers, Mr. Troop. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Before I begin, I want to recognize uh, our lead down at the City Hall, the council that works morning, noon, and night on the Pan Am Games, Mark Grimes from Ward 6, Toka Lakeshore. Thank you, Mark. And talking about young athletes, I see a good friend of mine in the crowd, Dana McKeel. He covers high school sports like no other. I want to thank you for supporting the young athletes. Thank you so much, Dana. It's a great pleasure to be here today in such great company to announce a key milestone for the 2015 Toronto Pan Am Games. As you just heard, we are moving forward with an exciting plan to group venues together. This will be a great benefit for athletes, spectators, organizers, and most importantly, the taxpayers. Toronto will host five of these Pan Am venue clusters with many exciting events in Tobacco, Scarborough, downtown Toronto, North York, and Exhibition Place. Spreading these clusters across the city means experience lasting legacy of the games 
we spread fairly across Toronto. The Pan Am Games partners are working hard, very, very hard, to ensure the economic infrastructure and community benefits last long and dedication of the athletes who will compete here in Toronto. To all these athletes, to their friends, families, teams and coaches who support them, on behalf of all the residents of the City of Toronto, I sincerely want to thank you for all your hard work and dedication. We also won't see the countless, countless hours of work that organizers and volunteers will put into these games to make sure Toronto is ready to shine on the world stage. Again, thank you for all your hours of commitment to the Pan Am Games. On behalf of Toronto City Council, residents and businesses of Toronto, I would also like to thank our key partners, the Government of Canada, the Government of Ontario, the Canadian Olympic Committees, and the municipalities across the greater Golden Horseshoe for your tremendous, tremendous commitment to these games. I'm absolutely thrilled, folks, about hosting the 2015 Pan Am Games here in Toronto. The games in Guadalajara were simply amazing. They brought the city together in a phenomenal way. As soon as I walked off the plane, you could feel the excitement. I can assure you, the games in Toronto are going to be spectacular. Toronto is going to host the best Anna games ever. Let's continue this great work, and I can't wait to welcome the world in 2015. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur Le Maire. Nous avons maintenant le temps pour une période de questions. We are now going to proceed to a formal Q&A period. athletics as well as a great cultural event as well. Um, I think that's a good start. The next part is people are already getting excited. When you look and you go out to Markham or you go out to Welland, you go out to these regions, people already are already getting engaged. They see this as being a uh, landmark event in their communities. Uh, they see this as a tremendous opportunity from a youth and a community standpoint. Um, so we are well on our way and we think that well, you know, this will be an event which really does grab hold of our communities, our multicultural communities, getting them to become part of this, taking ownership of it. Here we are. Right here. Here we are. Here we are. As you know firsthand, um, I was a little unsure of these Pan Am games in the beginning. But I will guarantee what I saw, and I will assure you, down in Guadalajara was simply phenomenal. As soon as I walked off the plane, the excitement, the volunteers, the raw, 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 uh, the patriotism, it, it was incredible. And you went down there and it was like one huge happy family. Millions and millions of people singing off the same song sheet. And I'm a true believer in it. I saw our Canadian athletes, I toured the village. It, it will be amazing what's going to happen. Backing out of the building of the cricket stadium by 
the Honorable Mayor. Where does Brampton stand? Is it taking part in any way in the games or it is a total shut up? Well, you know, we learned a, a while back to let the municipalities decide what they want to do. Um, I've got a few bruises from trying to intrude. So uh, from this standpoint, we're letting Brampton decide what Brampton wants to do. We're proceeding in parallel to develop our baseball, softball venue. We've been out with expression of interest to have some great uh, interest from the different municipalities. Uh, our primary interest is making sure that baseball, softball are ready to go. Uh, we're, and uh, that's what we're focused on. So cricket is a no-go. Well, cricket's never been part of the Pan Am uh, sport profile. It's not an Olympic sport yet. So uh, from that standpoint, um, it's never been on the program. Uh, two questions. How many satellite villages do you uh, expect to meet now? Uh, we're, we're evaluating that. We do believe satellites are a strong idea because they allow you to move athletes and officials in an efficient way. Uh, that's work that's ongoing, and we expect to come back soon with regards to what exactly our satellite village plan is going to be. So how many, you know? Uh, until I say I don't want to say. <laughs> and how many, uh, how many of the 36 sports now, I believe now are going to be Olympic qualifiers for Rio 2016? Uh, that's a great question. And, you know, getting the best athletes is such an important part of uh, what will make this a relevant event. Uh, there's two things to do that. One is making sure that the Canadians send their very best teams. We've had great work with the COC, and we're very confident the best Canadians are going to come for these home games. Um, for example, rowing. They're bringing their A boats to Henley because they want to have their athletes rowing in front of their hometown. Olympic qualifiers is the second way to do things. We've had ongoing and very productive discussions. We're not going to be in a position to make firm announcements, but we would be hopeful that at minimum we would have the number of Olympic qualifiers that Guadalajara had, which was 12 sports, and we'll build from there. How many international sports federations have already signed off on the venue? Well, they don't really sign off that rapidly, so we've had very productive discussions where really it happens two years before the game, so we've got more time to go. Uh, but based on discussions to date, that's why I can say we're very confident we'll have at least 12. We're shooting more up to 15, 16, and that's work ahead of us. Uh, the Gilgit Center is uh, being reviewed right now, and uh, apparently it's only about four or 5,000 fans that take it a whole. Um, basketball is going to be drawing a huge crowd during the Pan Am Games. Uh, is there going to be any kind of improvements or enhancements for the uh, fans? Will you be able to accommodate all fans? for that particular sport? Well, I've got an optimist in our midst. That's fantastic. Um, we, we, one of the things we've taken is we prefer to have smaller venues that are full of spectators. When we saw Guadalajara, it was phenomenal when you had that energy in the smaller venue. We think Maple Leaf Gardens and the Pete Gilligan Center will be a tremendous venue for us. Well, amount of how much you're going to be saving through the clustering? That was money was a big reason why you decided to go that way, I understand. So any idea just how much you're gonna save from doing that? Okay, I'll take a, a crack at that. Okay. I'll do that. The yeah. um We've looked at this a little bit differently. We had we inherited Bitbook, there was a lot of good work on that. We took that as our base and we iterated it and improved it. As we did so, we didn't really measure the amount of saving from one to the other. What we did say was this structure with clusters and how we're looking at it with a simplified footprint, what it will cost to deliver it. So we're looking at more around so that we can say with confidence the venues and the clusters and the footprints can look within the budget. We haven't done a lot of work trying to measure the delta between that and the bid book. It really isn't productive for us. We've got so much work ahead of us. So we yeah. realize we are early in the game. And twofold, in terms of the, bid, the municipalities that should have been, that were in the bid book and that are not there now, these uh, from 16 to 11 big venues, have they started any work because they thought they were there? And also, uh, could you give us a percentage how ready are we? 10 percent, 20, 50 percent, maybe in terms of uh, renovating, retrofitting, and building stuff? Uh, okay. The, um, fortunately enough, the, uh, the, the, the uh, municipalities which won't be part of it have had not, didn't have to do anything, so they're not sitting there with money that they had to spend that will be uh, not being used for the Pan Am game, so we're good in that regard. Uh, we're probably in the first 20% of what we're doing. The, the important scoping to make sure that the program, you know, what are you going to do in the Welland Flatwater Center? What does that program look like? That's a great example. 
we've, we've uh, got designs, they're moving to the RFP, so at the front end work that construction will happen later, but we've got the important 25% across, I'd say, all of our venues that we're building at this point, which will set the stage for construction coming up in 12, be ready in 14. It's extremely affordable, so your average person is saying, well, how affordable is it, and do you have any idea of the cost of tickets? Uh, that's a great question. My cousin in Oshawa has asked me the same question, so I've had some practice at it. Uh, we don't know exactly what the pricing will be. Will be reasonable. The other thing we need to be thinking in terms of is creative ticketing with situational pricing, so you can price afternoons different than evenings, price the finals different than the preliminaries. Uh, looking at ticketing packages with new family plans. You know, when we look at clusters, we can also look at multiple entry tickets. We'll be looking at all those things against the guiding principle of making sure it's accessible and affordable. No, not at this point. Our ticketing strategy will be finalized coming into uh, the last part of construction and when it will be finished by. So some of that was provided as I went through venue by venue. Um, we will be having those announcements. We're moving for construction to happen in, in the summer and fall of 2012 to have every one of our new builds be ready in 14. So that's work ahead of us. It's very exciting announcements. Um, we're moving towards that in the coming months. Will there be any permanent lasting facilities constructed there for, for use in the game or all those temporary, essentially temporary venues, I guess, except for BMO Field? Right? Well, well, you know, it depends on how you look at that. No, there isn't any uh, hard capital improvements that will be lasting. However, we do think what we're doing by using those facilities, we're showing what's possible around revenue streams, you know, direct energy um, has not had the kind of uh, sporting activity that that we're going to show and I think what we're demonstrating is repurposing some of these venues to demonstrate how they could be economically viable in all new different dimensions. So we're not building things but I think we're educating ourselves around what's possible and I think the exhibition place is a great example of that. Uh, I heard the number 41 as the countries uh, that we're expecting. Being from South America, I know we have 20 um, Latin American stand speaking. So 41 sounds like an amazing number. And one of the key ingredients to this whole event is the amount of tourists that will come here, who will bring a, a, a tremendous amount of revenue. So is there any idea right now, uh, Mr. Trump and uh, also the Minister, of the amount of tourists that we are expecting to come to the province? Sure, that's a great question. And it's a very important element, the economic viability of these games, not just the construction, but driving tourism. We've said it, we have got a three levels, community of practice, three levels of government who's developed a strategy. They're moving forward to executing that strategy. Part of it is to make sure that our community is aware. Part of it is to make sure that tourists within an eight hour drive are aware. And part of it is reaching into Latin America to attract those sport tourists as well. Um, they have a goal of a million visitors coming. Now the work ahead is to turn that strategy into action. But we see this as being a very viable thing. Uh, we have given our community and the, you know, both the prospects of these games, plus the micro-tourism opportunities in Niagara and all those sort of places. We also are looking to piggyback with Rio in 2016 to see if we can create some kind of synergy because you know, we are the stepping stone to Rio 2016. We should exploit that from a tourism standpoint too. I'm glad to hear it's a million. Torontonians are probably thinking, how am I going to get around? What are we going to do about transportation gridlock in the city? Well, let me take a crack and then maybe Charles can take a second crack. Okay. Well, you know, that's an important thing in any game. So you've got to be able to move the athletes and officials efficiently, and you've got to move spectators to different venues. Uh, one of the great advantages of clustering is it simplifies our footprint tremendously, which I think will aid in how we move people. We have got an excellent team framed at this point, with, led by the Ministry of Transportation, which is developing that strategy of how we do that. Um, and that will be an important point that we'll be coming back and discussing in 13. You know, when we were down in Guadalajara, I was taken by the degree of uh, activity that occurred in that region and the distance between venues. And I'm confident that uh, what Toronto and the Greater Toronto Area and the Golden Horseshoe has to offer is going to be outstanding given what we saw down in Guadalajara. Metrolinx is involved. We're going to have dedicated goal lines going from Toronto to Hamilton. We've got uh, a village in the core of the city 
Some of this is also going to be accessible by bikes and walk. It's not going to be a great distance in certain areas within the cluster. Certainly those areas around the north part of Toronto have been discussed and we have to do vast improvements and try to get people there. But what we saw in the region was a lot of cooperation amongst the residents of the city and the athletes and the visitors coming. People recognized that we wanted to make certain those athletes got to where they had to go in, in, in an appropriate time. Uh, certainly around the uh, 400 series highways, we've got the HOV lanes, we'll take advantage of those. More importantly, I think people are going to really welcome these officials and these athletes. The communities are going to be inspired by some of the venues and the attractions that will come from it. Um, I think uh, Torontonians, Ontarians, uh, will be tolerant during that uh, couple of weeks to enable this to be a success. Elizabeth Church from the Globe and Mail. I'd like to ask uh, Mayor Ford about uh, concerns about traffic, uh, Torontonians' tolerance. I know you're concerned about gridlock in the downtown, uh, transporting athletes uh, around the city. What do you think the impact for Toronto residents will be? How are you going to try to address that? Just like Mr. Tripp was saying, I think you have to see what happened at Guadalajara. They had shuttle buses going back and forth, and the traffic was flowing. So, uh, of course, people are going to know they're going to be inconvenient. But you know what? I think that's the price of hosting the games, and I think people will understand that. And um, you know, everyone, we're all working, like I said, off the same page, and we're, we're going to uh, put the city on the map once and for all. And uh, I think it's going to be huge. Well, I don't think I know it's going to be a huge benefit to all the taxpayers in the city. Thank you very much. That brings to an end the uh, formal question and answer period. I'd now like to invite our guests up front as well as the athletes. When we get to go back and get it Thank you. 
Yeah. It's already pretty blocked. The guard there is in Guadalajara. I was down there also. It was awesome. They had um, they had special lanes. Not saying that could happen here, but it could happen here. But the, I think their advantage also is right where the Pan Am Village is. Uh, the gold train is right there. It is right there. There's a set of stairs that do go up there. Um, so could there be a temporary platform brought in? I'm not saying it could be, but you know, you move the athletes. You have a special train. There's been dedicated trains. You can move uh, the, the athletes out of the village right into Hamilton on, on the gold. So that's a, that's an option. This is the city where you have. You know, you have four big league teams, you have all kinds of professional sporting events, ATP, WTA, tours. Will people go watch amateur athletes between countries that they don't care about, that may or they may not be Olympic qualifiers? Will people actually go to this event? Well, you're asking the wrong guy. I'm a, I'm a sports guy, as you know. <laughs> I'm and, a sports uh, guy, too. I'm That's a sports guy. But we got to, Toronto's got to, you know, take their head out of the sand and stop looking at the B-class event. This is going to be the biggest sporting event this country's ever seen. And like I said, if you had been down in Guadalajara, uh, it was a, a phenomenal. The advantage Toronto has, we have 41 countries coming here. They already live in our community here in the region. They live here. How we tap into that energy, could you imagine the Brazilian athletes getting off at the airport and we get the Brazilian community to come and meet them at the airport? I think it would just blow away the athletes as they got off the plane. So, you know, when, you, when Brazil plays Chile and get these communities out to support them, when Canada's there, we're all going to be cheering for Canada. But, you know, when Canada's not playing every game, it's going to be phenomenal. They had them in Guadalajara, it was phenomenal. So, uh, I think there's a plan to market it, and, uh, you know, I won't be on my couch. I'll, I'll be there at these games, and like I said, but, you know, Toronto wants the Olympics. These are the events we have to support to get the infrastructure to get the big Olympics, but I, I, I'm here to talk about the Pan Am Games, and I think this is not a B-class event. This is a very, very big event, uh, not only for Canada, but obviously for the region. Do you want to see a casino in Ontario place by 2015? Well, casino, I, I was quoted yesterday, I think, uh, in the Globe. I said, you know, the council has to take a step back. You know, there's all this politics being played with the casino. So you ask people who want a casino, it's a 50-50, right. uh, you know. But when you start talking other things, it's, you know, if there's a $4, $4 million, $4 billion investment by whoever it's going to be, and 10% is a casino, then I think that changes. But I think what council has to do, take a step back, let OLG and the province do their work, and see what comes forward, and then we make a decision. So, um, you know, wherever it goes, there'll be lots of consultation on that, but I said, let's just step back and see what comes forward. Councilor, on the transportation strategy, is that a strategy to move athletes or to move spectators? Uh, it's between moving athletes and spectators, but uh, I'm talking about moving the athletes. It's very important that we get these athletes, uh, you know, yeah. on time right. to, their, to their events. That's the that's the number one thing. If a, right. if a, if a uh, uh, spectator is late, it's not like a, an athlete. Being late. So we learned in Guadalajara that the village is a very important piece. of they have to be fed on time, with, you know, the different uh, diets they have. So that's an important piece of it. But the logistics for the athletes is probably the, the number one thing we got to look at. But also, uh, there will be a strategy. We, said we had a forum yesterday, and there was a seventh meeting, an almost college meeting. We were working on that strategy. We're a little bit early to talk about it now, but there is being a strategy form, and uh, we should know a little bit more uh, you know, in the months to come. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councilor. Can you give us an insight into what he's thinking these days? Uh, you know, I, I don't know what he's thinking. I mean, that's a question for him, <laughs> not for me, but uh, I'm there just doing my part on council, and uh, I can't... I, question for him. Um, you know, we've done a lot of great things together, and uh, there's a little bit of a, a showdown there right now. But, you know, we've done a lot of great things, and uh, I, I can't answer for this. Uh, a lot of passion on the floor, as you, as you saw from uh, Council Perks, and you know, there's a lot of fear mongering going on too. But for me, being the chair of Exhibition Place, uh, you know, to bring that back home, I was there for 62 years in the city for 65, it's happening down the street. You know, it's very important that, uh, you know, Exhibition Place is happening spot. It's going to be, you know, 2015, it's going to be the showcase. You know, the, the clusters that we have, Exhibition Place would be Pan Am Park. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. And I agree with Mr. True. People walking through those doors before the events even start, we're going to blow people away. So uh, I'm excited to be not only the chair of Exhibition Place, but to be you know, the mayor's uh, lead on the secretary for the Pan Am Games. It's going to be phenomenal. So I'm excited. And I said, if you guys got down to Guadalajara, you'd be excited as I am. So. Who's the junket? The junket. That was no junket. I was there, and I left with the mayor. Got there. So, there. Where was the press <laughs> junket? <laughs> Yeah. 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 It was phenomenal. You know? I, I told a story yesterday to the seven municipalities. Uh, and you, I think you might have heard me talk before. I saw Argentina and Canada playing. And uh, we were down, I think, 16 0. Uh, I was with the Ian Trooper down the front. We were down 16 0, uh, five minutes in. Well, Canada fights its way back, fights its way back. Didn't have a lead all game. We, tie, we were down by three with 15 seconds to go. They called a timeout. They brought the ball to half court, they brought the ball in. So the crowd just starts going crazy, and they're counting the set 14, 30, and the, and the two Canadian players going back for the ball outside the three, goes away, fade away three, sinks it with 
you know, a, a second to go. The place went crazy. And I had my, my phone and I kind of went around the crowd panicking. And I turned around behind me, there's four girls in the last row with a Canadian flag. And uh, I go, look at this, this is crazy. This was all, went, was going overtime. So I said to uh, the gentleman who was looking after me in Mexico, I said, you know, Diego, can you go up there and get those four girls and bring them down the front row there, just put the flag. So I brought them down and said, where are you girls from? They said, Mexico. They were Mexico, but it was so exciting. And then we went on to win the game um, in, in, in overtime. So I was doing a speech at the opening of the Pan Am Village and Larry Tannenbaum was sitting in the front row and I said, all due respect to John, it's the best basketball game I've ever seen. So, you know, it was it was phenomenal. So when people see that, it's going to be great, right? And uh, you guys will play a big part of it in, uh, in marketing when the games are here. And get people, you know, the preliminaries, you know, we got to get them out to the finals and get them out to it. It'll be, it'll be great. Thanks, guys. Good luck. Looking forward to seeing you. All right, here they haven't been able to do. So these venues are going to have ongoing life. They're also closely associated with the universities and educational programs, so students and others are going to be able to use them. Um, I don't see any white elephants, is, uh, I think is what you're getting at, and I'm very confident that uh, our city, our, our, our region, is going to have sufficient uh, support for these venues going forward. And what will happen to the village after? Well, the village is going to be an exciting, it is an exciting story. We're going to have a lot of uh, marketable condominiums that are going to be available at Wintestan. There's going to be a huge number of social housing and affordable housing. Uh, there's also going to be, for the first time, George Brown College is going to have a residence for students. And there's going to be a YMCA right there in the city core. More importantly, we're revitalizing that waterfront community, which we've been talking about for years. And we've accelerated that now by about 10 years. So I'm very excited about uh, the prospects. And again, a lot of job creation that comes from that. Thank you. Rosie McConnell. And what is your sport? Trampoline. What does the games mean to you? Why are you here? Um, I'm here because having a home games is really exciting. Um, it's going to bring a lot of uh, athletes and new venues and facilities to the city that I think will benefit not only the high performance athletes but kids wanting to get into sport and pursue recreational activities. Um, I think it's an amazing, as we saw in Vancouver, it really brings the country together and having that same experience um, with the Pan American Games in Toronto I think will really create a lot of movement in sport. Um, as you do uh, your sport and you're going around the world, uh, this is a, still a number of years away. What does it mean? What's that energy, the conversations you expect to have when people ask you, how's Toronto, how's the Pan Am Games, you got the games? Um, perhaps you had those conversations about the London Games or Rio. Now that you have them here, what's going to be a little different in the next few years for you? I'm sorry, I don't really know what the question is. <laughs> um, People in other cities, yeah. they have their games, yeah. and then you're always hearing about their cities and their Olympics. Oh, okay. Now it's our turn. What does that mean for you? Is it um, especially since Toronto is my hometown, uh, it'll be really exciting to like share that with the other athletes um, around the world and say like build excitement around our city and say how an amazing city it is uh, with the waterfront and with the multiculturalism, with all the other things that are going to coincide with the games. And I think it'll build a lot of attention and. Uh, draw a lot of people into the city. Uh, there's a lot of people here in our hometown that aren't really familiar with the Pan Am Games. Mm -hmm. You know, they hear the Olympics, they might hear something else. Yeah. Uh, we have the Ontario Summer Games just a few days, well, a few yeah. months away now. Um, do you expect the excitement to be yeah. building or...? Yeah, I think so. It's still three years out um, and there are things ahead of there, so, or like ahead of the Pan Am Games in 2015, but uh, I think leading up to it, once we get closer, once they see the venues popping up, once they get to know the athletes like, at the Olympics and uh, continuing forward, I think that will all kind of snowball and create a bigger excitement around it. Well, uh, it's still a few years out, but we hope to see you up on the podium uh, several uh, times. <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully. Thanks. Well, thank you.